question, we have two terms, and the first thing we always want to check is if we can factor out a common term. So 81 and 18, they can both be divided by 9. Right, so if I take out a 9, I factor it out. It's as if I'm doing 81 divided by 9. So 81 divided by 9 is 9. We're going to have the n left over. And then plus 18 divided by 9 is 2. Okay, now we have two terms. We want to check if they're difference of squares or cubes, but I don't have any squared next to the n, so this is as far as I can go. So that's our answer. Number two is a little tricky because it's two steps. The first step is that common term. I want to see, is there anything they all have in common? They all have a 4 in common. So I can divide out a 4. I factor it out. So it's like dividing everything by 4. 4p four squared divided by 4 is p squared. Minus 20 divided by 4 is 5, and I have a p. Minus 200 divided by 4. Well, like the 20 divided by 4 is 5. But there's an extra 0, so this is going to be 50. Okay. Now I have three terms in here. So I can keep going. Even though I factored out that common term, that's just my first step. My second step is I have three terms, so I want to make that x method. So my x method, I have negative 50 on top and negative 5 on the bottom. And so two numbers that can multiply to, to 50 would be 5 and 10. And 10 minus 5 does work, but I want it to be negative 5, so it's going to be negative 10 and positive 5. Now, don't stop writing that 4. What a lot of people do is they just make their answer P minus 10 and P plus 5. And this isn't going to be fully correct because you're missing out that 4. You need to keep writing the 4 in front. So this is 4, and then parentheses, p minus 10, and p plus 5. All right, next question. I have two terms. I want to start off seeing if they have anything in common. They both have a negative in common, so I can factor that out. Then 10 and 15 can both be divided by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3, so they both can be divided by 5. So I'm going to pull out a negative 5. And then they both also have an R. This one has an R, this one has an R. So I can take out an R. Once I do that, it's kind of as if I'm dividing. So negative 10 divided by negative 5 is positive 2. R divided by R cancels out, and I have P to the 6 left over. Then negative 15, a lot of people are going to want to put a minus here. But think negative 15 divided by negative 5 actually turns to positive 3. R divided by R cancels out, and I have a Q left over. Now again, this is two terms. I could check to see if it's a difference of squares. It's not, because I can't square root 3, I can't square root 2. Okay, next up, 4K squared minus 25. This one, there's nothing in common. I can't divide by 2, can't divide by 3, can't divide by 4 for both of them. But I can do that difference of squares thing. So what I like to remember with the difference of squares is kind of the formula is box squared minus... So box squared minus triangle squared. This is going to turn into box minus triangle times box plus triangle. So what I kind of like to do is I like to just kind of write out what is the box, what is the triangle. So the way you do that is you just square root both of these. Square root of 4k squared is 2k. Square root of 25 is 5. So this would be the box is 2k minus 5. And then 2k plus 5. All right, our next problem has four terms in it. So... When I have four terms, first I'm going to check if they all have anything in common. They don't. And then I want to do grouping. So these can be grouped, and these can be grouped. In my first group, I'm going to see I can't divide by 2. They're not even. I can't divide by 3. I can't divide by 4. I can't divide 49 by 5. I can't divide by 6. But 7 does work. So I can pull out a 7. Okay. Then they both also have an x. This one has x cubed. This one has x squared. So they both have at least x squared. If I divide the first part by 7x squared, 35 divided by 7 is 5. x cubed divided by x squared. It's like I have three x's, I'm taking off two, so I'm left with one. Right? 3 minus 2 is 1. Then minus 
49 divided by 7 is 7. And then I have x squared. I'm dividing by x squared. That cancels out. I have no more x's left. Then plus 20 and 28 can both divide by 2, but even more than that, they can both divide by 4. So I'm going to factor out a 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5x minus 28 divided by 4 is 7. Now what I want us to notice is this is 5x minus 7, and this is 5x minus 7. So what I can do is I can pull out that 5x minus 7. That's going to be my first factor. And my second factor is going to be kind of the leftovers, the 7x squared plus 4 part. Oh, and I don't uh, add those. That's my fault. These are factors, so they're being multiplied. So it's 5x minus 7 times 7x squared plus 4. All right, that's important. There should never be a, a symbol in between those. They're being multiplied. All right. Next term, we have 3. So I can't factor out any common terms, so we're going to do that x method. The top number is going to be 25, and the bottom number is going to be 5. Two numbers that multiply to 25, oops, uh, 10. Bottom number is 10, the middle. And add up to 10 are 5 and 5. So it's going to be <laughs> P plus 5 and P plus 5. Now, if you get this on multiple choice or you look at an answer key, whenever you have like X times X, you can write that as X squared. Right, And so this is p plus 5 times p plus 5. So this can be simplified to be written as p plus 5 squared because I have two, two of that same term. All right, next up, 7 is a little tricky, and it's because of this 2 in front. So whenever we get this 2 in front, uh, there's an extra added step to our x method. So when I do the x method on top, I get 40. On bottom, I get negative 13. <laughs> two numbers that multiply to 40 add up to negative 13. 4 and 10 doesn't work. Next up, I tried 5 and 8. That does work. They're both going to be negative, negative 5, negative 8. Now, when I have this 2 in front, though, we got to be extra careful with that 2 in front. So this is going to be 2n minus 5 and 2n minus 8. But you need to make sure you understand 2n times 2n is 4n squared. You always have to divide out. Whenever I have this, I have to divide out one of them. So the first one I can't divide. The second one I can't divide by 2, divide by 2. So that's going to be... 2n minus 5 and n minus 4. All right, and then number 8 is four terms again, so that's another grouping, so I want to group these together. And this one is also a little trickier because there's that negative sign there. So the first one, what I can group out is they both can divide by 5, and they both have an m, and they actually both have an m squared. So if I divide 10 divided by 5, I get 2 m cubed, take off m squared, is just 1m is left. And then minus 15 divided by 5 is 5. m squared divided by m squared cancels out to just 5. Okay, now, this part's the, the tricky part. When you have this minus, um, sometimes you're going to divide by you know, factor out a negative, sometimes you'll factor out a positive. It kind of depends on what the other numbers are because we want this to look the same. So if I, you know, factor out a negative, that's going to help us out. So in this case, 16 and 24 can both be divided by 8. So if I do minus 8, then 16, negative 16 divided by negative 8 is 2, and we have m left. And then 24 divided by negative 8, right, because we're pulling out the negative 8, would be minus 3. And I think that's my fault. Um, when I look at this, that's not the same, but that's because I just divided wrong. 15 divided by 5 should have been 3. Right, so you always want to check this term. It should be the same as this term. Now, what, I'm going to just come back to this negative symbol for a second. Um, had this been flipped, like had it been the wrong signs, had you had like negative 2m, plus 3, right, inside. Stylus is really not doing a good job. Negative 2m plus 3, if that had been what was inside, 
um, it would have been because you didn't put a negative symbol here. You probably would have had like a positive symbol there. And so if you ever have them flipped, like, oh, these are backwards, that just means that you want to change that positive symbol to a negative symbol, and that'll switch the signs for you. So I want to pull out that 2M and that negative 3. And then I have 5M squared minus 8 left outside. Yep. 9 and 10 are bonuses, but we'll do them quickly. Uh, these are the cube root ones. So the formula is box cubed plus or minus triangle cubed factors out to be box plus or minus triangle times box squared minus plus box times triangle always positive triangle squared. And so there's like that soap thing to this, the same sign, the opposite sign, and then always positive. So the way that you figure out what the box and the triangle are is you just take the cube root. So I would take the cube root of this and the cube root of this. So the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 125 is 5. So then you just plug those all in here. So it would be x, the sign was positive. So x plus 5, we're going to use the top row because it's positive. So x plus 5, box squared is x squared. Change the sign minus, x times 5 is 5x. Always positive, 5 squared is 25. Same thing over here. I want to figure out that box, and I want to figure out that triangle. So when I cube root 27, you get 3, and then there's an x cubed, so it's 3x. And then when you cube root 64, you can look on the, the table I gave you guys, you get 4. So then, same thing, you're going to plug those into here. Now, this time, though, because we have a minus symbol, we're going to be using the bottom row. So we're going to get 3x minus 4. Then square it. 3x squared is 3 times 3 is 9x squared. Change your symbol. Plus 3x times 4 is 12x. And then always positive, 4 squared is 16. Those didn't make a whole lot of sense to you, that's okay. Those are going to be bonuses.